Hey, welcome back to Weeby Kids. I'm up in the forest again today. I've come up to tell you a story. And as I was coming up here, I was just marvelling at how beautiful the day it is. I was walking over the hills and noticing the green grass and the blue sky and the yellow dandelions and the yellow daffodils. It's beautiful. And as I was walking, I was wondering what story I might tell you. And if you've been following our resources, you'll have noticed that in resource four, Annie did a, a yoga um, session that was all about the butterfly. And in resource five, we did a nature art project, which included going out, collecting lots of things and making your own nature butterfly. So I thought it was perfect to tell you a story about a butterfly. And this story is said by many to be the first ever story told before every other story that you've ever known. And this story is from a time when the world was filled with just one colour. It wasn't red or pink or blue or yellow. That colour was grey. Can you imagine a world that was just grey? Grey sky, grey grass, grey people, grey animals, grey flowers, grey sea. Well, that time existed. It was called the Age of Greyness. And it lasted for a long, long, long time. And had it not been for a tiny butterfly, we may still be in the age of greyness now. So one day, one very grey, murky morning, a little butterfly was sat on top of a grey oxeye daisy. It was looking around at the grey sky and it looked up at a grey holly tree. And in that holly tree was a big spider web that was covered with morning dew. It turned back and it flapped its wings a little bit. And then seemingly out of nowhere, the grey clouds began to part. And as the grey clouds parted, a tiny little sunbeam came down from the sky and it hit the centre of this beautiful spider web. And as it touched the center, all of the drops of dew inside it began to shake and shake and shake. And as they shaked, each one of them became a different color. The butterfly looked up in amazement. It couldn't believe what it had seen. It began to flap its wings. And as it flapped its wings, the spider's web shook. And as it shook, the colours came tumbling out of the spider's web and filled the top of the oxide daisy. Wow! The butterfly was amazed. It flapped some more and as it flapped, the, the colours were, were whipped up into the air and they came to land on the butterfly's wings and the butterfly looked at itself. Can you imagine if you'd never seen a colour before and suddenly you were covered from head to toe? From tip of wing to bottom of wing. And greens and yellows and blues and whites. The butterfly didn't know what to do. Why him? Why had all of this colour suddenly appeared in this daisy in front of him? He sat gently batting its wings wondering when out of the trees flew the old wise owl and landed down by the butterfly and the butterfly said old wise owl look at these beautiful colors that have that have appeared what are we to do and the wise owl said oh for this i have heard before this is the day where color comes to the world and you small butterfly you have been chosen to bring an end to the age of greyness. But me, said the little butterfly, 
I am just a tiny butterfly. Please, owl, you come with me and help. I don't know what to do. The owl said, you must fly across the entire world and you must paint it the beautiful colours that you choose. The butterfly was terrified. He looked at the owl. He said, owl, please come with me for you are wise and strong and I am just small. And the owl said, I can't come with you for my wings will create too much force and the colour will splatter everywhere. It must be you, butterfly. You have been chosen for your agility and your gentleness. But the owl said, what I will do, butterfly, is I will lend you my eyes so you can see all of the earth. And the owl bobbed down and he put his beak into the into the colours and on the back of the butterfly's wings he drew two huge eyes. And some of you may have seen that butterfly, it's still around today that has big owl eyes on its back. And with that the butterfly thanked the owl and off he went. He flew up and up and up and from above the forest the little butterfly looked around at what it could paint first. He peered down into a glade and in the glade he noticed a, a beautiful flower shaped like a bell. He flew down and he whispered to the flower. He said, flower, I am going to paint the world. What colour would you like to be? And the flower looked at him and he said, please paint me blue and call me the blue bell. And the butterfly bent over and he painted the bell a beautiful blue colour and off he went but as he went he noticed some ferns unfurling he popped down and he painted those green and then he noticed ivy creeping up a tree and he painted the ivy green too but then he headed out of the forest and out of the forest and over the hills and as he went over the hills he noticed that some of the hills were covered with heather thick mat of grey butterfly fluttered down and it sprinkled pink all through the heather and he carried on and he flew down by the river and as he went by the river he noticed another creature swimming up and down and crawled up, crawled up onto the bank it was otter and butterfly came down and said otter what color would you like me to paint you for i am painting the world and the otter said oh, Butterfly, please take this greyness away and paint me the most wonderful brown. So he painted the otter brown. And then the butterfly turned and he flew up to a broken tree above the river. And there he met a bird, a bird that went by the name of King Fisher. He said, King Fisher, what colour would you like to be? I have painted otter brown. I have sprinkled pink in the heather. I have painted the bluebell blue. And the kingfisher said, for I must be more than one colour. I want to stand out. Paint me turquoise and orange. The butterfly did just that. He painted the kingfisher turquoise and orange. And as he flew off, he looked back at his greatest piece of work. He then carried on. He decided it was time to paint more flowers. He popped down into the fields again and there he saw a plant. A plant with leaves shaped like lion's teeth. And by this plant was a big grey head. Oh, he said, this is dandelion. He said, dandelion, what colour would you like to be? And dandelion said, butterfly paint me yellow and he did and then off he went and while he was flying he came by two other birds first he came by a big murmuration of starlings and amongst them he fluttered and fluttered and fluttered he said starlings what color would you like to be and the starlings said paint us blue and green and brown 
turned and the butterfly was whipped up in the murmuration that he just couldn't paint in the way he wanted and the colours began to splash and splash and splash all over the starlings and he called that iridescent and his adventure continued on and on and on as he painted one creature to the next one plant to the next tree to tree until the whole world was painted except for one creature he flew up into the mountains and there he found a pack of wolves he flew down and he landed on the nose of the lead wolf the head of the pack he said wolf I am painting the world all the colours. What colour would you and your pack like to be? And the wolf thought for a moment. He looked up at the moon and he lowered his head. He said, Butterfly, you mustn't paint us. We want to remain grey. The butterfly said, but why would you want to remain grey? Look at how beautiful the world is. Everything has a colour. And the wolf said, yes, the world is beautiful. But we must never forget the past. He said, the wolves will remain grey as a reminder of the age of greyness. So the butterfly agreed. And the butterfly headed back to the forest. And when he got back to the forest, the wise old owl was waiting for him. The wise old owl looked at Butterfly. He said, Butterfly, you have done the most amazing job. Fly to the top of the tallest tree and look around. And together they did. And the butterfly looked at his magical creation. An owl looked at Butterfly and said, Butterfly, you told me you was too small and too frail to paint the world. The Butterfly said, yes. And the owl said, because you are small and frail, don't ever think that you can't create something beautiful. Because creativity comes from our heart, not from our strength. And remember that as you fly through this world. And the butterfly fluttered off and the owl flew into the forest. And that is how colour came into the world. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you've not checked out the other resources about butterflies, please do. See you next time.